G'day subscribers and welcome to FJ Holden Jive Talking. You're with Jules Knight from the NASCO Bay Speed Shop. What I'd like to talk about tonight is paint. Now there's four types that I've used and I can only talk about what I've used so that's what we'll do today um, as far as Jive Talking goes. Now um, when FJs and FXs were first brought out the paint that was used was nitrocellulose lacquer. So um, that was the that was the one before acrylic lacquer, which still can be used today. Now nitrocellulose lacquer does not handle um, does not handle the atmosphere as well as um, other paints do. Now this this goes to show you like this is an original stocky. So this is um, Walter Bishop's car, right? So you can see um, the 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 paint is not handling the pollution in the air well for for today now now that is an that is an original that's an original paint job um now the way to pick nitrocellulose lacquer is when you're looking at a stocky and you'll see a lot of um crocodile crocodile skin in the in in the um in the uh, paint uh and you'll think oh why is that and it lets go um, but like we're in year 2020, that was the same car 40 years ago. So, uh, I'll just see if I can pick up and I know I'm young and skinny there, but, um, generally speaking, it wasn't too bad in 1980 and that's a 1954 model. And the beauty of that car is that it's untouched. So everything on it is a really good reference point. So I'll just see if I can... I get it down a little bit for you. But the point I want to make is the fact that, okay, between 1980 and now, so that's, what, 40 years, you know, you, you've seen the paint go from, you know, that to to this. So, um, you know, from that perspective, you, you can see how the paint is deteriorating over time. Now, um, when Holland brought out the 48, uh, sorry, the, the FBEK, um, what they were doing was actually bringing out a new style of paint, an American style of paint called acrylic lacquer, uh, and it was called the Magic Mirror Finish. Now, this is what's basically used today. The stuff today really doesn't have the, the lead tinters in it um, to capture all those really, really vibrant colours. They, they add more tinter of um, other types to try and get the same thing. However, um, lacquer is a really forgiving paint. Even um, even mugs like me can do a semi nice paint job in acrylic lacquer. You take your time. You spray it about forty five psi. Um, you 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 know as you get at the end of every every panel uh, width, it's a case of you come off the gun and then back on the gun, and you're you're trying to build a color. Um, with, with each run of the, of the colour across the panel. And then the next coat that you put on, well, you'll go in a different direction. So, you know, one will be straight and one will be cross-hatched and another will be along um, at, at right angles so that you're actually building the paint. So um, acrylic lacquer is really good because when it's dry, it really allows you, um, it, it, it's got a nice soft consistency to it and uh um it's it's you're able to block out if you get a run or anything like that i've i've been lucky i haven't got any runs yet um however you know i'd, I'd always watch my dad spray and he'd sort of get there and he'd get into it and it was still a bit wet and he'd go wish go and hit it with his hand and then give it a bit more i'm like dad what are you doing oh it'll block out so as far as my old boy was concerned everything would block out so um that was uh that was that was my dad but but um in in those days it was a thing called Julon and it was made by um Julux and that brand of paint has now obviously been taken over by PPG and 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 Julux now like that's that's a super enamel uh from back in the day and it's still liquid believe it or not it's 2020 and it's still liquid um Needless to say, um, uh, enamel is a lot harder paint um, as far as consistency and, and things like that are concerned. We used to paint all of our suspension um, uh, with enamel 
rather than any of the other um, type colours because it was pretty hard. Now, about 1985, um, it, we, we started to see the introduction of, of uh, two-pack, Acran. Acran. Now, I remember using Acran. Um, it's a clear over base type product um, and you're using reducer and things like that instead of thinners. But it, like really, really hard paint. Um, Acran two pack was used for, like for instance, the nose cones of the um, Boeing seven four seven jumbos, for instance. So that's really how durable and hard that paint needed to be. And, and we started to see the the introduction of clear over base on um, on um, cars, and there was. Uh, you know, different levels of success. Um, we, we, we see, for instance, you know, the VT Commodores now that are coming out and also a lot of Mitsubishi um, where, the, where the clear is actually separating and, you know, delaminating and peeling off. So um, it, you know, it's just not handling the conditions. But um, uh, that, was the, that was the real um, uh, transfer of paint into the automotive industry say from 1948 and probably well before that uh, and until until the the turn of the century and and now what we're seeing now now you're actually getting really good paint adhesion from the factory i know on my vf commodore um you know the solid color looks really really good so as far as paint is concerned um uh, I can only tell you what I did, and and, and for my FJ, I um, paint stripped, and um, one of the little techniques you can learn is uh, when you apply paint stripper to put Glad wrap over it and and just let it go off because the Glad wrap actually over a set period about over a set piece actually keeps the fumes in and lets it work a lot harder over that piece. Um, so I, 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 I paint stripped. Um, I did a little bit of um, sandblasting and a little bit of grind, not necessarily grinding, but hitting it with a disc. Uh, you can do that with a wire wheel and whatever. And that, and that worked really well um, to get to bare metal. Then it's a case of, you know, you need to hit it with, um, with um, Prepsol, you know, wax and grease remover uh, between each of the... Um, applications um, I always like to do that but um, I use deoxidine uh, on bare metal so deoxidine what what that's doing that's stopping any rust uh, in between each of the um, layers of protection that you put on it um, so in my case I, I you know washed the panel with deoxidine and then washed it off now that's the recommended that's the recommended uh, method ha however with my mate's show car um, painted in 1984 um, probably about 30 years later, you can actually see little dots creeping through his paint. Um, and, and from what's been said to us from a technical perspective, it's because of the water that was used to wash it off. What um, one of the painters in our um, Holden Club uh, said to me was what he uses is methyl added spirits um, to actually wash the deoxidine off. So I thought, oh, that's quite clever as far as the solution is concerned and, and removing that solution. So I would do that, then hit it with Prepsol again. Um, I, like, I, I used a, a yellow etch. Um, and then I, I put some undercoat on it. Uh, this is for the repair of any areas that needed it. And then um, I'd, I'd give it a very light undercoat. Uh, in my case, the, the um, fellow I had helping me, Brad Lye, said, I oh, will, you know, we should be hitting it with um, spray putty now. Um, and so I gave it, you know, two good coats of spray putty and then um, and then um, sanded it down and then gave the whole car a big undercoat um, before I applied um, nine coats of colour. So um, whereas today what's happening is that with the new products that we've got available, I think it's Dulux who've got a high fill and with high fill, that you, you can make it as thick or as thin as you want the high fill to be. And that high fill, uh, when diluted, will be um, you know, like an undercoat. Or you can leave it just a little bit thicker and put it on, spray it on. And uh, that, that will be like a spray putty for you to sand down before you put some guide coat on it to get it right. But as far as um, undercoat 
is concerned, I, I, I just use a suction gun. So, so the pot's at the bottom and the gun's at the top. Whereas for colour, I actually use my other gun inside that's got the pot on the top and it's gravity fed. So I actually like to use that for colour. I just use this as a as one for undercoat and so on um, with, with guide coat in between. Um, it's It's got nothing to, the, to do with the fact that I like sanding. I really don't like sanding, but you've got to get sanding right to reveal uh, ridges and, and dips in your paint. So that's really half the luck uh, of, of actually doing it. And when, when we're doing the FJ panel wagon, it'll be a case of I'll make sure, I'll make sure that we, we do some um, project work on that to show you. So um, we, we've talked about the different types of paint, but at the at the end of it, um, after you've finished applying it, and, and it's really to do with um, the air and the atmosphere, um, that you actually get a flow on the surface of the paint, and that's, um, that's what's technically called orange peel. And um, only so much so that it's like the surface of an orange. It does have that dimpling effect. And that's because of the, the turbulence um, and airflow um, between the gun and the surface. Now, you know, air at 45 PSI or whatever you're spraying it at, um, that is, uh, that's just used as, the, as a transport agent to get it from the gun to the actual product itself uh, onto that panel um, to move it from point A to point B. And then um, the, the solvent's just dry and um, it, it just allows the, the, the paint to apply. But orange peel, um, what you'll do afterwards is uh, after you've applied the paint, you'll actually um, block it down with, with fine sandpaper to get rid of all of the, the dimpling. Um, I know I did and I was quite lucky and I know um, people don't have their David Johnsons. David said to me, uh, when I was down at his panel shop, he said, Julesy, I want your FJ. Today's Sunday. He said, come back and pick it up Wednesday. And I'm like, okay. And when David says to me, I want your car, it's like Chip Foose telling you I want your car. And he, he literally spent two days going over my ute and um, he, he entirely blocked that car because he wasn't happy with how I'd blocked it down, or it wasn't to his standard, let me put it that way. And, and Dave is a professional, whereas, you know, when I've, 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 I'd, I'd just literally take the gun from my dad and say, let me do it for you, will you? Um, we, we were quite lucky. I, I had that sort of um, training from when I was little and also going to Dulux school with the rest of the club members, so that was terrific. So I enjoyed doing that, but um, I, I've buffed a few, but I was never as good as... Um, as uh, what my dad was buffing. And I remember uh, Neville Brown, the painter, he, he came over one, one night because my wife Tracy had a hold in and we were, we were um, trading that in on a VR for her. That's how long ago it was. And, and dad was there buffing up um, Tracy's hold in. And, uh, and Neville was amazed because um, dad had the buffer and it was, a, it was a buffer, not a grinder. So there are two different things. A buffer is a higher speed. So, you know, you, it's variable speed. And I think minimum is about 600 RPM. And you don't want to go too slow and you don't want to go too fast because you don't want to burn the paint. But when you're buffing, you've got um, a coarse and a fine cutting compound. Um, and, and Dad was, was getting a real lift out of Tracy's orange um, Holden. And... Um, Neville was amazed, and he was a professional painter. He had his own shop, and he was amazed at the fact that Dad could buff left-handed and right-handed. And what he failed to realise that, um, you know, Dad was a a um, a highly prized um, tennis player. So he was very good at that action, that flowing backwards and forwards action, whether it be left hand or left side of the body or whatever. And and Dad had that, um, whereas Neville was explaining to me that. Um, Painters are just right-handed, and and um, that was it <laughs> as far as getting rid of the orange peel was concerned. But the one thing that was that's left over um, is swirl marks, and you'll, you'll see the swirl marks of the buffer in the paint. And what uh, what my old man taught me was um, to get rid of swirl marks. You used to use corn flour, so we would just sprinkle corn flour over the 
over the surface of the paint and then just hit it with the buffer just to take the swirl marks um, out of it and then after you've um, got the swirl marks done you fully expose the paint because what you're doing is using the cutting compound you're actually cutting a new layer of paint which is why it's good to have uh, a decent amount of paint on the surface um, and to be able to cut a little bit off the top so you you've blocked all the ridges down and then you cutting a new surface because in cutting the new surface you're bringing the shine to life so that's the importance of blocking and buffing and also of getting the swirl marks out but um that was just a bit of a, a technical um addition for um fj holden jive talking so so those of you who are listening um watching on our on our channel um don't forget to also pop into um, the NASCO Bay uh, page on Facebook. Uh, share, like and subscribe. But more importantly, enjoy your Holden.